Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. Follow me on Instagram at dneals. Boy, we're getting political. We're talking about societal issues. We're using a show that we watch where people try to bump their Harrisons, you know, pump their Palmer, uh, squirt their Steve, reality Steve, whatever. Uh, we're trying. We're the show's so dumb, right? It's about love, finding it. It's about influencers, but. We get some real life conversations out of it. And I think that's why you guys are here. I think that's what we're here because we can put the uh, the old Dave Neal on. We can go do some uh, feeding of the babies. We can go uh, garden. We can, uh, you know, uh, wash some dishes. Whatever it is you guys are doing right now. And you're going, oh my gosh, I'm, I, I'm washing the dishes. I know you are, Samantha. You're putting me on. You're like, all right, it'll be 12 minutes long. I can get this done. And then I'll go see my brat children who should be in school. Whatever. You know, you love your kids, right? So Clay Harbor, he posts a tweet and deletes it. It's political. People are going to get angry. Oh my gosh, we have differencing of opinions in a country of 300 plus million people. Can you believe it? And this is what's wrong with our political system. It's early in the video, but we'll get right into it, folks. Here's what's wrong. We, we don't belong in a two-party system. We really don't. We're forced to cram ourselves on one side versus the other, and then we have this ideological so, so, uh, you know, civil war. Well, my side's right. Well, my side's right. Well, how about we uh, hold objective thought to both sides? We've got a president that's got the lowest approval rating of all time. He won. We did it. Go get him. I want you guys to know something. I hate that you have to preface like what you believe in before you share an opinion on something, but I'm a progressive guy and I really believe that when explained properly and educated, most of the people in our country believe in progressive policies. Most people believe in a healthcare system that works for us and not for the rich uh, insurance lobbyists and pharmaceutical companies, okay? I think that most people believe we should properly fund the, uh, poli uh, the police system that's out there, not just train people that, uh, you know, wanted to be a cop since junior high when they got stuck in a locker, okay? Properly uh, uh, having healthcare officials be able to uh, talk about mental illness in our country, and yet what do we do? We line our politicians with money from sugar lobbyists and, you know, the dairy industry. It's like our, our we, we, we live in one of the most obese countries in the world, mainly because we have food deserts, we can't afford organic food, all these other issues that exist, and what do we do? What do we do? We complain when an influencer posts a tweet. We complain when so-and-so opens their voice. We get so-and-so fired because we disagree with them. I don't like it, folks. I don't think we're doing... I mean, and will it come to a point where it all gets burnt to the ground? either physically or, met, or metaphysically or metaphorically before we open our eyes to some of the issues we have. I didn't want Joe Biden, but I voted for him because that's what we got when my boy Bernie got stiffed again. How many times does Bernie have to get stiffed? You know what I mean? The system's flawed. So Clay posts this tweet. We'll get into it. Uh, let me go. Let me find it right here. He posted a tweet. Here he is, by the way. Good looking guy, Clay Arbor. And look, he has every right to share his political opinion on issues. He posts this tweet. In hindsight, I voted wrong in 2020. I voted with my heart and not my head. What a disaster. Now, we're going to make some assumptions that he's talking about the presidential election here. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe he's talking about American Idol. He's like, yeah, I really wanted uh, Nolan to win, but then I voted for Jezebel. And next thing you know, you know what I mean? Who knows? Maybe he's talking about Dancing with the stars. Amanda Klutz should have had it. The point is that we need to not listen to the trigger words. Like, wait a second, what side is he on? Did he say cancel culture? Did he say woke police? Did he? No, no, no. We're not doing that. We're not saying, oh, what side do you want? I need to see. Oh, you're anti-vaxxer. You're anti-masker. You're anti-this. You're anti-that. You're pro-gun. You're pro-live. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're, not, we're having conversations about where most of our country stands. And unfortunately, squeaky wheel gets the grease and the people that we hear from, uh, whether it be how corporations, uh, you know, what, what, the, the consumers that they listen to, uh, it's the people that are willing to get on Twitter, get on Facebook, make some noise. And that goes in both directions. Cancel culture is not one side, like it's the left. No, no, the right, the right, you know, are busy. You know, as, as was said, I think on Bill Maher, the, the, the right is living in fear of being canceled by Donald Trump. If you go against the Republican Party, Trump's got you canceled. And that's what's happening in the next election cycle. The next election cycle, he's primarying, 
which means he's having uh, his own Trump you know, endorsed contestants go after people that disagreed with him on the big lie that happened on January 6, 2020, right? So these topics aren't easy to discuss. I'm just a bloke who covers The Bachelor, but I'm not afraid to talk about it. I'm not afraid to bomb on stage and stand up, and I'm not afraid to talk about it here. And we need to know, first of all, any comments are like, oh, you know, let's go, Brandon. Uh, get out of here with that shit. Get out of here. You're, you're, that's low IQ. It's more complicated than that. We need to live in a country where we all come together and understand when something's flawed. Has Joe Biden done a great job as president? No. Is he responsible for all the issues that are going on in our country? Absolutely not. Obama, if you talk to a lot of economists, was responsible for the surge in, in the stock market, right? He recovered us from a recession, and then Trump kind of rode that wave until the pandemic hit. And Trump goes, oh, we got this uh, big, like, you know, everything's great because of me. And it's like, well, there's a ripple effect from your previous policies. So we're dealing with uh, the result of just like class warfare. We're dealing with the result of, like, we are in a sort of ideological civil war. It's existing. We're fighting with our relatives. We're fighting with our friends. We're fighting with our influencers. How dare they have an opinion about what they did wrong in 2020? Now, did Clay have a better choice in the presidential election? Maybe not. But in the primary, he did. Joe Biden was all but done before the South Carolina primary. Uh, uh, Bernie Sanders was storming ahead. He had undeniable wins in other states. And then Joe Biden was, in, was endorsed in a way that it pushed him over. And then he kind of rode that wave. But not only did he ride that wave, a lot went behind the scenes, not trying to sound conspiratorial, where you have people like Pete Buttigieg. All of a sudden, he's like, what, transportation secretary? Dude's never rode in the tra public transportation in his life. You got all these people that all dropped out of the race at the same time so their votes would go to Biden. And then you have someone like Bernie being like, well, what are we going to do? You know, do we play fair? Do we work with the party? Or do, we, uh, or do we light it all on fire? And his idea was to play fair. And everyone said, we got to vote for Joe Biden. Just like everyone said, we got to vote for Hillary Clinton. We got to put our weight behind because the other side has a bigger enemy. And at some point you got to go, you know what? You almost want, and again, I have the privilege to say this because life's going okay for me. I have the privilege to say this, but you almost want to see, it's like, all right, you take the keys, go take the keys for a ride, take the next three elect election cycles. You know what I mean? Because it's not just one side that's bought and paid for over the other side. Okay. You got, you got, uh, uh people like Dan Crenshaw, who's a Republican who beats the S and P 500 by like a lot. He was the fifth best, uh, I think, um, uh, uh a political figure, with regards to how much he, his stocks made. Their insider trading is the point. And then Pelosi's doing it on the, on the Democrat side. So it's going both ways. Both sides are effing us, and we are just fighting each other about it, and that's the problem, folks. That's the problem. So Clay posts this tweet. <laughs> anyway, join my patreon.com. Clay, is it a tirade? A little bit. A little bit because I'm not an expert and it's really hard to communicate your points when you're not an expert because it's so complicated. So one of the comment sections is going to go, Dave, you got it all wrong. It's this is the issue or that's the issue. You've got the industrial, the military complex, right? You've got all this money, uh, the, you know, blindly being spent on wars that we might actually be getting into right now. We might be getting into a war with Russia, World War III. It's not out of the realm of possibilities. Uh, the Democrats are all but going to get swept in the 2022 election this fall, and it ain't looking better in 2024. So where do we stand? Uh, do we just stand blindly behind a political party? And I'm not saying you got to go from the one side to the other. I'm just saying both are flawed, both suck, and I don't know the way out. But I think education is the key. And we always talk about the fact that teachers don't get paid enough. I really think we need more teachers in, in, to, in hold, to hold office. I think that's something we really need because teachers do a great job of explaining to us how we're getting so royally effed. Uh, we'll read this person's comment right here. Someone said, I love how everyone in the U.S. seems to forget high school civics. <laughs> By the way, a lot of us weren't taught high school civics. We weren't even taught how to do our taxes. No, we don't know anything, guys. I learned about the dinosaurs in Egypt. That's all I know, okay? <laughs> the uh, State School of Rhode Island. The, con <laughs> the Congress writes and determines domestic law. The president can veto or pass. At the end of the day, you hate how the country is going. Look at your multi-term Congress people and senators. They are the jerks who care more about election funds than governing. That's right. 
The second you get into Congress, you have to start campaigning for your next election cycle. It's called Citizens United. It was a Supreme Court ruling that overturned like a centuries-old uh, precedent that uh, corporations can't fund uh, elections. Only people should. And you know what? People shouldn't. Uh, I feel like it's France who does this, where they give everyone like a week to campaign and you can only spend a certain amount of money. That should be how it goes. Statistically, and now Trump kind of changed this a little bit because he had so much free media given to him by both sides because they just played anything he said. So he was kind of a uh, sort of a maniacal genius in that way. Oh, Dave called Trump a genius. Sort of a maniacal genius in that he was able to conjure up so much airtime that he didn't have to spend. And that's the fault of both sides, of all sides, right? But in most cases, whoever spends the most money wins. And the second people get into office, they start campaigning to raise more money. And it's like, what are we even doing? Are we fighting for our local people? No, we're not. We're not fighting for our people. And it happens on both sides. Of course, we can look at the Republicans not wanting the Build Back Better plan. They don't even care if their bridges are going to fall down or if they got potholes in their streets or all these other things. Uh, it seems like the global issue of... Uh, you know, what's going on with, uh, with the uh, global warming or global climate change, whichever you want to call it, we're not addressing because we're too worried about short-term goals and not looking at the bigger picture, whereas other countries are setting up infrastructure to, to really succeed in the future. It just seems like if I were uh, an enemy of our country, I would be laughing at the infighting that we're doing, the deleting tweets that we're doing, how afraid we are of to have certain conversations for fear of having people call our advertisers. That's why I love being in a position where I'm not beholden to an, a sponsor. If I was Tasha Adams, and I'm not blaming her, but if I were Tasha Adams, I would keep my mouth shut because I'm making about a million dollars a year. I'm taking a wild guess. Jason Tartik said, if you have a million followers, you're probably making a million bucks. I'm keeping my mouth shut because I'm protecting my own because we live in this system where we're kind of funded and sponsored uh, in a way where we don't want to ruffle feathers and we're canceling people on both sides. And people say, well, it's not cancel culture, it's consequences. So say someone like Clay decides, you know what? I'm going to actually stand by this. I voted wrong. I changed my vote. People would literally call, like say he worked for Peloton. Oh, I disagree because he decided to change his vote because of the other side. You know, it's all, it's all hogwash is my point. Hogwash. And what are we going to do about it? I just don't know. Someone said presidents always get way too much credit for good things and way too much blame for problems. And most people in the U.S. don't understand what the president can and can't do. Well, I know the president can attempt to at least cancel student loan debt, something he said he would do and hasn't done. So there's a lot of things he can do that hasn't happened. And we voted in somebody who said they were going to bring together both sides and Unfortunately, it seems like he was pretty naive because if you remember, he was vice president when Obama wasn't able to get anything done because of the stalemate that existed in the other sides of the government. And look, we understand our government works in a way to like foolproof itself from one side getting too powerful, you know? Uh, so that's a good thing in a sense, but it's also led to just, I mean, I feel like we're, our feet are just frozen in the center of a lake and nothing's getting done. What can we do to fix it? Voting in officials we believe in and vote and putting our, in, 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 in today's money, we got to put our money and our time and our energy into upcoming election cycles. But again, when the economy is not going well and uh, you have a Democrat in office, statistically, the next midterm election cycle is going to go to the other side. Now, if you're on the other side, the question is, what do you stand for? What do you stand for? Like, what do you want? You want to have your taxes lower? What, like, what is it that you actually, and leave a comment. What's the platform of the Republican Party? It just seems like they're trying to stop all progress. So we already kind of have that assumption. And then we have several members in the Democratic Party, Cinema and Mansion, who pretty much just line up with whatever their wealthy donors want them to do. They're beholden to the people that finance their campaigns. So they have all this self-interest to not do what the people want. I guess the only way to solve all of this isn't by deleting tweets, but I understand why he did. But it seems to be the only way to solve all this is through enlightenment and education and understanding we do spend the most in health care for a country that's supposed to be one of the wealthiest countries in the world, if not the wealthiest. We spend more per capita, which means per person, 
uh, way more than the next socialized healthcare place, which means we shouldn't have to have GoFundMe accounts when Timmy gets cancer. We shouldn't have to have a GoFundMe account when you go skiing and you break a leg. No, the, the, uh, boy. So all these issues exist, and I think we need to continue to educate each other. And there's a lot of, you know, progressive news channels that do a really good job talking about this. David Pacman show breaking points isn't even a progressive channel. They have a Republican and a Democrat that come together and have difficult conversations. And I think that's where we need to be. Uh, not, you know, not in traditional media that's being sponsored by pharmaceutical companies and the uh, kind of dark, uh, you know, all these other dark money companies where we don't know where like where their funding's coming from. That's not the world we need to live in. We need enlightenment. We need truth to power. And we need people to speak their opinions without fear that they're going to get DMs and, and have a job get lost because they thought a certain way. Ideas are okay. The more we share our, our ideas, the more the better ones rise up and the bad ones go down and we challenge those in the meantime it just sees it just seems like we're fighting a war with each other when we should all be holding hands and figuring out how to fix this thing let me know what you guys think i'd love to hear from it on a lighter note i wanted to tell you this on a lighter note my fiance has been crushing it with her instagram game this video might do do pretty well who knows but i wanted to share one of her instagram reels she's posting all of the travel stuff that her and i have done over the last few years here's a good one this was the day after uh, Tasha and I got engaged in Thailand a couple years ago. And this beach behind her right here is uh, from the Leonardo DiCaprio movie, The Beach. And uh, here's a quick uh, Instagram reel of that. Paradise on Earth. There, there we are. So um, I know I can't play the music because it's uh, licensed, but we had a good time and just a bunch of photos of us knuckleheads jumping into some beautiful uh, Southeast Asian waters. Wasn't that lovely? Oh boy, felt nice. That was just months before the pandemic began. Who knew life would change so much after that? If you love my channel and you want to support us with your dollar, you can do it by liking her videos and commenting on them. And if you really are inspired, you can share them on your stories. That's a way that you guys can help us continue to fund what we do so we can share our story. And you can find her info right there at Tasha Courtney. All right, folks, that's all I got for you guys. Be well, be kind in the comment section and don't be afraid to share your opinion. That's okay. We'll talk to you later. Bye, guys.